Hi there, I'm Ellie. I'm a low vision paraclimber with Team PCH, and here I am dancing, doing a little boogie, having all that fun. I'm editing a video right now for my friend Kevin from his recent ski trip, and I'm just enjoying my morning coffee in the sun in my kitchen here. Enjoying that coffee. Oh, hey, it's me. I'm waving. Here is me showing off my editing software on my iPad, and it's literally just iMovie. But yeah, that was Kevin on his ski trip. And I decided to take my hair down to show you guys how long it is. Thought that was super cinematic. But uh, yeah, my hair goes past probably to the bottom of my rib cage there, middle of my back, and uh, it's super long. So I wanted to show you guys how out of control it was that morning. And here's me braiding it, getting ready. I'm watching a Scooby-Doo YouTube video about like the punchline is that Fred is the one who has the Netflix account, which I thought that was so funny. You see me braid characters. I'm trying to like adorably like put my braids in. But yeah, now here's me on Bart after I was done getting ready. And here's the Bart train moving. And here's my guide dog on the Bart train. And okay, I have to tell you guys something. Kevin's wife, Janice and I, we snuck off. Uh, she had dropped off Kevin uh, before she came and grabbed me from Bart. And then we snuck off and hung out for like over an hour and got McDonald's. And she showed me this brick building, which is gorgeous. And so I'm showing off the sunset. And it was such a good little girl's time before we actually climbed. I'm not allowed to talk or she'll get very upset with me. Let's just just photobomb her video. We're just having our own conversation. Kyle, I didn't mean to make fun of you that much to the point where you wouldn't narrate my climbing. I was hoping that you would do the voiceover part for me so I didn't have to. It would also show everyone Coach Funkel slash Coach Kyle's uh, coaching abilities and really telling me, hey, Ellie, climb this right. And I'd be like, oh, okay, cool. I can do that. Um, but I have taken your advice very thoroughly and I'm trying to do more footwork just for you. And I believe I'm doing it. You know, here I am just quickly making my way up this black 5-9 route. And I believe the route setter is Guava or Pi, one of them. They're pretty cool route setters. But it was a cold night here in the gym. And I think I regret going into she -Ra mode because where I am right now is where the handholds started to get really cold. And you can start to see my body tense up because my hands are frozen. They don't exist. They're not there. And I have to figure out how I can climb a wall with frozen hands because they just don't exist anymore. But I'm showing a lot of good footwork here, so I am going to cut my narration so you can hear. So 5.5, according to my friend, anything below 5.9 is just technical hiking. Oh my God. He's kind of an ass. Yeah, this is definitely an overstatement. The sand. It's not easy. Look at that footwork. Look at that stem. High quality stemming. I think I took you out of the image though. Cut your head off. She never race over these anyway, so. so or do I, Kyle? <laughs> Alright, here is my next route here. It is a 510B by Bestie Bam Bam. And I've done this one on camera before. So it'll be nothing interesting, but I am kind of going for speed here and the most efficient moves. And really trying to do my best footwork possible. Like I said in the gym, it's cold, I'm wearing a sweater, and I run hot when I'm working out because that's just my style, but I was freezing in the gym, you guys. You could not escape the cold. Any single handhold you touched was freezing. So there was not a lot of she going on, and that's okay because me being warm is more important than she and being cool because you know how male climbers will take off their shirt and then suddenly they have power yeah i take off my sweater and i am she -Ra. we don't need he-man here but i am she -Ra, the princess of power so here i am i'm literally on the middle of the wall right now guys um and sorry i did not frame the camera correctly 
So I'm gonna cut out in a bit, but that's okay. But side note, I do like Kyle. Kyle's my bestie. He's one of my favorite uh, coaches and one of my favorite sighted people who has matching Crocs with me, which is a, a, some people. Uh, but no, I, I seriously love Kyle and I mess with him in all good sport and I, I hope he knows that. But I'm doing a cool, nice little knee drop foot little hook here on a hold, moving myself up. I notice that if I really use all my mass that I have in the back, I can get holds better because I can counterweight myself. So I'm doing that. I am almost at the top here. I pinky promise I'm coming down in a minute, but I am trying to find the best holds because I'm kind of stuck where I'm at since there's no good spots for me to move up. So here we go. I'm almost there and now I'm coming down. See, wasn't that easy? I told you guys, super quick in and out, bam. So this is my good friend Liv here who I'm tying in to belay her. And if you guys don't recognize her, she is actually from the Disney Plus show, Pick of the Litter. Her and her guide dog Tartan were featured on Disney Plus's series, which is really cool. And I somehow got Liv to come out for the first time and come climbing with me. So this is the first wall. So you're gonna see what I have them do here. I'm going to have her climb up a couple feet up the wall and then just sit back into the harness so she feels what it's like to be lowered without having to climb up an entire wall first. So right now we're just going over the safety stuff and here she is climbing. All right, so here she goes and she is doing a strong left foot, bringing that up. And here you see her just really trying to figure out the holds here and she is using a high contrast yellow route here. And she's moving her way up along the wall here. Definitely finding where her feet belong, and she is making her way up. She's doing a great job here. Another notable thing to add is I also brought my other friend, Annalisa, and surprisingly, I thought I had a video clip of them, but I did not record any of their climbing that night, which is super sad. So next time we will, you can see one of the guide dogs here in front of the camera. So Liv is about to sit in to her harness here and come down. We're just communicating that and here she goes sitting into it. And I am letting her bounce. And we're gonna lower her here now. All right, so after coming down from the wall, we talked about how comfortable that felt and now we're good with the ropes. We're good with falling. So I'm sending Liv back up the wall to climb it as much as she can now and you can see Right from the start here, she is going a lot faster where she already climbed. A lot better movements, more fluid looking. Our left hand is finding the next handhold. This is kind of a trickier wall because there is an overhang, I will admit that. But it is a 5'7", and so I think she definitely can do this wall here. And the reason why I had her do this 5-7 wall here, which was slightly overhung, is because there is high contrast here. And, um, jump scare. Kyle knocked over the camera. He said, oops. <laughs> but it's okay. He puts it back and he even flips it over and puts the camera back into perfect framing. So we can't be too mad at Kyle, everyone. We, we love him, we forgive him. But here's Liv still climbing, doing great. One of the guide dogs is still in shot and I think it is Liv's guide dog, Tartan. Um, both of our dogs are actually laying with each other in the shot here, so it could be my guide dog for all I know. But that's, we don't know. It's a black lab, we both have black labs. So Liv is trying to find the best handhold right now and they are kind of stuck. There is a knob handhold above their left hand across from their shoulder there, about diagonal, uh, that they could use, but you have to put your body weight in a very specific direction. So we are trying to problem solve, seeing if we can bring our feet up at all. And we're just kind of talking through it. And like I said earlier, we chose this route because it was higher contrast, because I realized that me as a caller probably isn't the best idea because I am low vision. So we're, we try to give each of us the best sight here and choose the bright yellow route. So Liv is now coming down um, 
and I think she did an amazing job and I gave her a hard route on purpose guys so I'm just evil so here we are tying out of our harnesses our belay stuff so yeah all right so in this clip we have the voice of my friend Annalisa talking to their guide dog because they wore booties since they took Bart in the corner is my friend Liv climbing and I'm looking up at them and I'm trying to decide what I want to climb of course I'm looking at Bam Bam and Kyle is describing who Bam Bam is. Across from me is my friend Grace, who is a fellow PCHer and climbed with us that night. And I thought this clip was fun to include. All right, so in this clip here, I am showing Liv how to properly tie into a figure eight, and we are trying to do hand over hand instruction to show how to properly tie in. And because I am so low vision, you will see how close I have to get to Liv's figure eight. And you'll see that Kyle's in the corner here because he's going to belay Liv, but he was like, yeah, Ellie, you, you better teach this. And I think this is my friend Annalisa recording as well. So shout out to Annalisa for really grabbing the camera and just zooming in on us. I really appreciate that because it shows a lot of my technique. But um, young Ellie would be really proud of me for being very open about having to get close to things because I have always been ashamed about needing to accommodate myself and getting close to my materials. So here's me showing Liv. All right, so here is Liv once again on this green route, which is a 5-6. And if you guys notice, to the right of it is a black route. Now, I personally confuse green and black a lot when I am climbing. So you will see as Liv is climbing this route that she will ask me a couple of times, is this hold mine or is this off? Or she'll even put a hand or foot on there thinking with confidence that it is. And I have to say, nope that's off um which is something that's really common and i totally relate to because i don't i don't know what it is with green and black but they look so similar to me but you can see Liv with confidence showing off a lot of flexibility here and just moving up the wall trying to find the best hand holds and doing the little froggy jump into some next holds here they're just the best in my opinion i love my little froggy squats so I am actually belaying Liv in this video, and I just set up my phone on a still little camera, and we're just looking up on a vertical wall. I actually did lie earlier. This wall is a 5'7", not a 5'6". So I've been putting Liv on pretty hard walls, but I definitely think Liv has got this and it's easy peasy for her. But you can definitely show that she is shorter than me, for sure. But you can definitely see that she is using her lack of height to her advantage because she is showing how flexible she is by being able to do a really high um, heel hook or a, a toe hook here, or just putting your foot on a hold, really. Um, and she's just showing that she can move up there and she's that flexible so this really shows that climbing is not just a sport for someone who is tall i'm personally five six liv is shorter than me but yes she is really just making her way up this wall and you can definitely see that she is doing her best up it and you can tell she's having a good time she's just moving she's taking her pace but really showing how static low vision climbers are I mean, you can see a sighted person and they just die know their way up this wall, really. But with low vision climbers, you have to have your hold basically right in front of you because we can't really see past our hands. So we need to have our next hold close to us because if we need to throw ourselves, how are we supposed to know? Plus, it's really hard for a caller to call for us to say, yeah, you need to jump 10 feet. How am I supposed to estimate that, right? So that's really shows that, you know, us slow vision people, we're a little bit stronger than you. Sorry to flex on you and everything, but yeah, we're just, we're stronger. 
So Liv's just making her way up. She's almost at the top here. I'd say she's about three fourths of the way up the wall. And she is doing a great job here. I also wanted to point out as Liv is climbing, there is another climber to her right here that is climbing up the red route. So these routes don't intersect too much, but they are fairly close if you really look at it. But since the routes don't intersect too much, the other people were okay with climbing and we were okay with them climbing alongside us. But I know that red route there is a 5-9 by Guana and they are doing a great job. Everyone's going up and at their own pace. Um, and she's showing off pretty impressive moves, but back to live here. She is doing a great job really trying to see where her holds are at. And she's just kind of leaning back into the harness here. You can definitely see Liv getting a little bit more tired here. She's putting her elbows out. And she's slowing down a little bit here. But she is doing such a good job and putting up such a good fight on this wall. Bringing her foot up to the next foothold. And she is doing a great job. And as you can see, Liv is almost to the top, maybe less than 10 feet from topping this wall, but she's definitely getting tired here, and that is okay. One of the biggest things about paraclimbing with PCH is that you listen to your body and you really understand and respond to what your body is telling you. A lot of our climbers do have conditions where they have elevated heart rates, and sometimes they just need to sit along that route and just rest which that's totally okay, but she is so close there, and next time I know she's gonna top this route. So here she is going to come down now, she's letting me know, and I'm gonna say, okay, lowering, and here we are. Okay, so per Kyle's request, he told me to do this 510A route, this pink one, and funny story, I did try to climb this route when I first started climbing because, you know, I had invincible strength, invincible stamina, and now you know I do get tired, I'll admit that. But um, I, I'm not happy actually looking back at this recording with how I climbed it. I feel like I just very clunkily climbed up this route. I feel like I just fell right here. I slipped. I just, I feel like I climbed this any way possible i don't have a lot of fluid movements you see me trying to find whatever i can and i i'm kind of disappointed in myself which that's fine because climbing is all very much you know it's it's progressive but it's not linear progression sometimes you're gonna get worse sometimes you're gonna get better and i actually wanted to climb the red five nine which is to our left here um but kyle said ellie I think you can do this pink one. And I was like, oh, okay, I can do that. You know, my, my total people pleaser side. But I, I was definitely giving it my best shot and you can see some good movements here as I climb it. But it's definitely not the best. I definitely could have done better on this wall. And we panned down the camera just a little bit. We're readjusting, our camera person's readjusting. I think it's Annalisa and um, gave us a good look at a lot of the starting holds there which i don't usually get to show because of how i have to frame especially at this back wall here there's a person to the right of me doing the infamous bam bam route my favorite one but i liked this little move that i did here and then i i pushed myself up i like i liked that but not every move on this climb i liked and i think that's the problem here's my friend zooming in you know so they can see better I'm trying to find, see if I can mantle something to bring myself up because I can't see a foothold. So why don't I just use the one I wanted to mantle on? And I can't quite reach that handhold on my left, so I'm just going to bounce myself up here. I'm definitely a louder climber. I'm not even going to lie. Sometimes I do be kicking walls. Sorry. I know that's not etiquette. And I'm slightly out of frame here, but we're panning up and I'm almost at the top. I'm about three holds from topping it. 
And I don't know why I was a little bit shaky climbing this. I think it was the, the people pleasing expectation. But here I am, my hand's on the last hold and my second hand is touching it, matching it. And here I come down. All right, so now I'm hopping back over to this 5-9 red route here because I just done that pink one and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna fulfill my dreams here. We're gonna do the red one. But here I am, I'm just giving it a great start here. That is a high right foot that I just did. Somewhat of a shallow left foot, but this route's cool because it goes to the left and then you swerve to the right and it's very fun. It crosses a little bit into the pink territory, so you'll see me later trying to ask about it. But I've been foreshadowing that this whole video. So here I am. I'm flying up this first part here. I'm asking, is this pink or is this red? It was pink, so that's not mine. Because originally I was going to try to put my foot on that or put my hand against it and try to climb up somehow. I had an interesting beta in mind, but that's, that's not my handhold. So I had to figure out from there how to get up here but i really loved a lot of the jug and slide cling and all the cling holds that they had here and i'm really throwing myself up this was very quickly that i was able to do this i'm very proud of this particular climb and i think it shows when you do have the right mindset in a climb that you can really prove yourself and show how quickly because i'm about mm, eight holds from the top probably so probably like five feet and I'm four holds from the top so I'm just gonna like throw myself up to the top now but yeah here I am I got the top I'm showing everyone I'm strong I'm giving the camera a thumbs up and here I come down so I hope you enjoyed that red climb so for the last route of the day it is the infamous bam bam black route here it is the 510B, and I am trying to climb this route as much as I can before it goes bye-bye. I love how big of moves I can do, and I also notice that every time I climb this route, it's completely different, which I really appreciate in myself because I'm finding different ways of climbing it. Right now, I'm sitting on this hold. Like, I am sitting on this big hold. And I think that's so funny, and I'm trying to grab my next hand holds, and I'm really pushing myself, I'm kind of smearing and flagging, whatever I can do, <laughs> I just like kicked my whole body, now I'm hanging, I'm flailing around, and I think it's hilarious that every time, sometimes I can do this beautifully, very like fluid-like, and meanwhile today, I'm just throwing myself up however I can. So now it's coming to the part where I'm going to try to hook my calf on to the big hold where my left hand is. So I have to move my hands up to basically that crack climbing hold there. And I just have to say, this is the most unflattering spot. So where I just touched my right hand, that's where I know my foot has to go. So I know I have to bring it up more, but I have to figure out how to do this. Now this is a total flex of my mobility and my flexibility just trying to get my foot up to where that small tiny little foot chip is but i i somehow do it every time but it takes me a couple tries and then pretty much from here it's a pretty straight shot i just move my foot up grab the side cling move my foot up and then reach the top hold with both of my hands and that's how I do it, and I seriously love this Bam Bam route, and I think it's because there is the half wall element where you can stand on top of it, but I swear, every time I stand on the half wall, I get more and more claustrophobic. So here I am coming down past the half wall now, and I am landing soon. Got a small waist, dang! But anyways, here I am on the ground now, and that was my last route. Okay, we are at the BART station. We're waiting for a train. There's Annalisa, there's Liv. Say hi, say hi. You say hi. hi. What's up? There's our BART track. Waiting for a train. Here comes the train. Train car, three door train order at 218 minutes. Wow, look Not at this yet. lightning. Whee, good job. <laughs> That's all I can think about.
What, just Lightning McQueen right now? That's so bad. All right, so here we are sitting on our train. We're discussing our dinner plans as another train is passing by as our bar train doors are open and they actually stalled here at whatever station we we're at for a good 10 minutes, which is kind of surprising. But you know, we were just hanging out there. There is someone's hair on the seat across from us here. And I really wanted to get a shot of the BART door closing as we were leaving, but those dreams are for another day, I guess. So we are going home. We just got back to Liv and Annalisa's place and I'm in a cocoon swing and I have never been happier. Look at me, I'm just a little little gremlin in a little swing. I, I like can't even extend my arms to show. This is, this is great. I have to go get food now. All right, so it's the next day. We are relieving our guide dogs and right now we're ordering an Uber to go shopping. Uh, we're also getting Annalisa's retired guide dogs meds. So here we are. It's a beautiful sunny day out here in the, the Bay Area and um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go have fun and my hopes is that we go to a thrift store. <laughs> 